Welcome to Going Carnivore in Thailand. Now, I want to thank my user 604 Nation because they had asked the question on a previous video, how did you go from 190 to 380 pounds? What was the story? Well, that got me thinking, and I decided to work on reconstructing my memory over time on all the trials and tribulations, along with some associated stories of what transpired from 1977 when I was 22 years old to present day. So let's get to it with this episode. Welcome going carnivore in Thailand. Part of my frog series, this is 1985. I was thinking, what happened around 1985 for us? Well, 1985, I'm going to call, that's where the frog got lied to. There was a big push, at least in my mind, best as I can remember. Everything was going to be low fat. and no saturated fats. I think they wanted you to use polyunsaturated fat or something like that. So I remember back then, everything in the grocery was low-fat chocolate chip cookies, low-fat bread, low-fat chocolate cake. Low fat this, low fat that, reduced fat, uh, only the good fat. What a bunch of crap. The big f food companies literally paid off the media and the government to propagate what they could sell. And make no mistake about it, you were going to pay more for low-fat chocolate chip cookies than you were for Uncle Amos's or Famous Amos's chocolate chip cookies. <coughs> Excuse me. But, we were suckers. We believed. We listened. So I found my pantry being filled up with low-fat this and low-fat that and low-fat milk and basically everything. And, of course, eating all that meat had, had fats in it. So at that time, it was... My God, if you got hamburger, can you find 95% fat-free hamburger? They would have sold us 100% fat-free hamburger if they thought we'd buy that it was 100% fat-free. And was it really 95% fat-free? How in the fuck do I know? I wouldn't know the difference between 95% fat-free and 90% or 80% fat-free. Now, I'd rather buy 70% beef and 30% fat. You're better off eating the fat. If you stay on a high fat, medium protein, no carbs, low, no, low, no. I try to do no, but, you know, I don't think I'm doing no carbs. Uh, I don't think the carnivore diet is no carb diet. The lion diet that Ferrigno guy who does the lion diet that's done so well with it. That's no carbs because he eats ribeyes with salt and water. I think that's all he eats, period. I don't think he eats chicken or anything else. His lion diet is he eats ruminated meat off of cows and uses his air fryer or his sous vide, mostly his air fryer. 
And that's all he eats. And he's done real well with it. That's no carb. I think carnivore today is low carb because I think when I put a little bit of heavy whipping cream, which has got a lot of fat in it, and I put a little bit of that in my coffee, I think I get a carb or two with it. What I'm trying to do is keep it to zero sugar, which eliminates things like that great barbecue sauce that you can put on that beef or barbecue sauce you can put on the chicken wings. You have to eliminate that. But it's working. But back in 1985, we were sold a crock of shit. Low fat, no fat. And all it was all scientific, and boy, were we naive. And we trusted the government. Business was growing, and so was my waistline in 1985. Oh, I wasn't 190 pounds overweight, but I was overweight. I wasn't a 34 inch waist. I was probably up to. A nice, firm-fitting 38. And I was still doing active activities in, in 1985. I know that was a year before I bought a boat. So I was still in okay shape, but there's a big difference between a tight 36 and a proper-fitting 38 waist. <clears throat> and that's how it started. They started teaching us to eat the stuff that's going to make us healthy. And remember when the ads on the Cheerios were heart healthy Cheerios for breakfast? What a load of shit that is. Heart healthy Cheerios. Boy. And they probably had some doctor on the back, you know, doctors approve it. Well, that's 1985, and we're starting to grow. That's all, folks.